Meteorologist Lee Southwick is joining us with a look at the latest advisory. So Lee, what did we learn from this advisory? So we got a five o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Sustained winds of 85 miles an hour. That is a category one hurricane is moving to the east at seven miles an hour. Check out this cone. It is expected to strengthen into a major category four hurricane while out in the Gulf of Mexico. Sustained winds of 140 miles an hour. And by the way, it will continue to quickly strengthen overnight tonight it could become that category two and then a category three quickly moving into category four hurricane status. From there, it is expected to drop back into a category three hurricane. That is still a major hurricane before making landfall on the Gulf Coast of Florida, perhaps targeting near the Tampa Bay area. Our models are all over the place when it comes to where exactly it is going to go, but that's why the cone is pretty far north up to Steenhatchee, extending all the way down towards say the Naples area. But what about for us locally here on the first coast? I'm going to toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Tim Deegan, who's going to zoom in and go county by county to look at our local impacts. All right, thank you, Lee. I'm going to start off with the cone and then we'll go county by county because I just want to emphasize what Lee was talking about. Remember, this cone talks about where the average error could be. So three days out, the average error is still about 100 miles either side of where you see the course, not where the worst weather will be. The more significant model, I won't, I'm not saying better, but the more significant model that disagrees with this takes it farther to the north and is slower, but the farther north it goes, the more shear there will be, the drier the air that gets into it. So we don't think that'll change the numbers that we're going to share with you as far as everything we're looking at right now. This will be adjusted several times over the next several days, so please check back in. But for now, we're going to go for those of you in Putnam and Flagler County closest to the eye wall. Now, if it goes exactly as forecast, the eye wall will stay just south of you but you still might get put under a hurricane watch because it's going to be so close. Notice this sustained of 60 gust of 75 stay indoors and mobile homes. At least at this vantage point, we do not think they will be safe to be in next farther north. We're going to go St. Johns County. You may be just north of the hurricane warnings, but still a surge of four to six feet possible sustained of 60. That could mean widespread at least over the southern half of St. Johns County. Uh, trees down and power outages. And we're going to watch this four to six feet because that, of course, would bring some flooding into areas like Davis Shores and downtown St. Augustine. Next in line will be those of us in Duval. We're thinking the worst 12 hours Wednesday evening through Thursday morning surge of two to four, four to eight inches. If we get a four foot surge in eight inches, then there will be not just street flooding, but there will be flooding into homes and businesses farther north up the coast. Not as bad farther west. And here's the best news for those of you that were hit hardest by the earlier storms of Debbie and Helene. You're going to be least affected by this hurricane. Again, we're showing you the numbers, how they look right now. There's going to be a lot of adjustments as we go through the week. There's two other hurricanes out there. We've never seen three hurricanes in the month of October all at once, but this is going to be our focus and Lee's going to take you well through the next seven days in just a few moments.